here. Uh, this is the surprise case of the week. So I want to get your input on this. We've got a case that we saw this week, and we're going to show you some images of that and ask you what you think. So here's here's the um, here's the first image, and this is a little Boston Terrier, nine years old, that came in for something other than what was more significant than what it came in for. And we're going to start doing these uh, every week that we do our live sessions. So I will ask you. Uh, show you a couple images and then ask you what you think. <clears throat> this is the tooth after we've kind of manipulated a little bit, that whole back segment of that right upper fourth premolar in this little Boston Terrier was totally uh, fractured and the tooth was actually uh, in half under the gum as well. So that's what you see here. And then I want to show you uh, another image this is the rostral mandible on the right side. So uh, look at that and tell me what you think that might be. And take a look at that for a few minutes and put in comment, put into comment what you think might be involved there. And I'll give you another little hint. Here's the next image. Actually, there's the next image. Yeah. <laughs> There's the next image. This There is a hole there, and in that hole is a little foreign body. So that that might give you a, a good idea about what we're dealing with. And I'm looking into um, the chat here or the comments. And Patricia, glad to have you again. Patricia's from Brazil. She's one of our friends over there. Uh, no canine tooth, and that's absolutely right. There is no canine tooth there. And there's also no... Uh, first premolar, David uh, Carmen's uh, or David Carmana and Joseph Meadows both got that correct. The the cyst, there is a cyst there, and many times when we have teeth that do not erupt, they form dentigerous cysts. And in this case, that is the is the case. We remove that little foreign body, and that little foreign body turned out to be what I think is a pea, a little field pea. Uh, that this dog uh, evidently ate and it got stuck down in there because once I took that out, I just put some pressure on it and just exploded like a like a pea would, although it was a little bit yellowish. I think it had been there for a long time in that defect and caused all that mucositis there. So uh, pretty interesting. But here, uh, here's the image of that side and you can see that canine tooth is indeed unerupted. There looks like there is a remnant of the first premolar there as well in that dense area right at the bone interface above that canine tooth. And then you have all that bone proliferation. And there's the other side. So you can definitely see the remnant of that first premolar superimposed over that lucency there on the rostral lucency on the left of your screen. Again, you've got that canine tooth there. There looks like there's a uh, lucency mainly derived from that first premolar, but when we're considering this case, we have to take into consideration a couple things. One is that this may, because this dog's so old, this may have undergone, either, either of these uh, may have undergone some changes, some metaplastic changes that uh, this is actually uh, neoplasia. We can get uh, metaplastic changes that turn dentigerous cysts to neoplastic conditions. So we definitely would want to biopsy that part of the approach would probably be initially to biopsy, remove as much of the cyst as we can, come back and finish uh, later, assuming that we might have neoplasia there and don't want to disrupt all that tissue and spend all that time if mandibulectomy is going to be the way that we're going to proceed uh, rather than cyst excision. So 
uh, because the patients age, because the cysts are not horrendous, uh, we would probably biopsy both sides first, remove as much as we could, and then come back uh, later to remove those canine teeth if indeed the biopsy is uh, negative.